a uh, shed update and we keep adding to the pile we're getting closer and closer to uh, the ceiling on the uh, second stack here uh, which is the first stack is uh, 1 3 50 scale uh, enterprises and this is my, my catch-all uh, stack which has got uh, sea views coming in ML EVs uh, about a case full of uh, Mark 7 Vipers and then we added the uh, the new Star Destroyer on there because they don't really fit in the uh, ever-growing uh, Star Wars section which probably, uh, since I'm uh, since Bandai is basically being sold here in the States I'm probably going to I gotta try to rearrange it where I can put the Bandai kits in there too so uh, you know I got fine molds got a few Bandai which is the newer ones that are coming out but you know Got to we got to try to uh, re uh, rejuggle some of it uh, in due time. But first, then a shed update, and I just picked this up today. It's at the little antique toy mall that we got here in town. Uh, this is a I call it a vinyl kit, best way to describe it. This is Rat Think Kitty, if I ain't mistaken. It is. Uh, I guess you can get all three. When did this come out? 1999. Huh, must uh, either uh, didn't want it or I uh, didn't see it when it came out. But anyway, uh, I classify these as vinyl kits. Uh, I know they're already, you know, one piece because uh, I probably don't have one handy. I may have to, uh, I actually got some, uh, uh, they made some Star Wars ones like uh, Episode uh, 1. You got Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. They made some vinyl kits of like those. And uh, so uh, that's why I classify them as that. But I thought it was just an odd piece and I do have Rat Fink uh, I have original Rat Fink in a uh, Ravel and I think that one is either I think it's original but it could be a reissue I'm pretty probably sure it's a reissue going by the bottom of the box there it looks more newer but who knows and I don't remember and it's way up there and we can't tell but anyway we are adding a vinyl Rat Fink kitty to the ark uh i don't know i don't think i talked about this one but this is new out it's the uh tomorrow is yesterday's f-104 starfighter this is the Lindbergh kit which i don't I, I don't know if i talked about that and i don't know if i don't think i have one and i don't know if i could find a uh something Lindbergh handy uh nope 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 if I do got something Lindbergh, it's probably buried in the back. Or it's probably up front and I ain't seeing it. But anyway, go over here. Uh, I think it's actually a, uh, I think it's a cool kit. Now, I know it's kind of a gimmick. Uh, you know, you're basically buying a, uh, <clears throat> you know, a cheap plane. And I don't know, you know, if it's supposed to be an A, B, C, F, D. I don't care. Uh but I, you know, for the uh, actual box and everything, the concept of it is just fantastic. Plus, you get the little uh, Enterprises, which is, you know, one of the three-piece sets over there. Or, I think it's one of those uh, that they like to pre-paint the 2500 scale ones. Uh, which is, you know, it's alright. Wow, Mr. Microphone coming off. How dare you get hung up there. Ah, oh, so much to do. Gotta make microphone childproof here, but anyway, it's a. I think it's a. I think it build up to a great model, in my personal opinion. Uh, even uh, for its age of the kit, you know, uh, a lot of people. I know people are more concerned about accuracy, but I think that's uh, that would be top notch to even see that at a model show because most of the people would not figure it out that it's actually you know from. Uh, Star Trek, so that would be a plus if you saw it at shows. But I think it's a pretty darn slick kit. But anyway, adding the F-104 uh, to the art. Uh, I basically didn't get any vintage except for Mr. Rat Fink there. I do got some coming, and uh, I got some vintage kits coming. But anyway, we'll jump that bridge. But it, it was basically new kit week, and Pegasus always likes to come out with like a wad of kits at one time. And uh, so they had the uh, Hanabo 2, which uh, I guess everyone's making uh, German flying saucer kits, which uh, it's one of those, you know, I had to have it. So uh, it's 1 144 scale. It kind of goes with kind of some stuff, you know, but it's actually pretty decent uh, size-wise. I mean, that's pretty uh, pretty good size kit for, 
uh, for the scale and uh, there's just so much you can do with it I mean you don't have to paint it that way you can just do some so much stuff and uh, I uh, I like stuff like this so that was a um, you know that was a must buy but anyway we're adding the uh, Hanabo uh, to the art uh, the rocket ship XCM. No, this ain't a whole lot to it. I mean, it's like you know seven pieces, but it's also a classic uh, science fiction vehicle. That and uh, I don't know where I put all the. I think I shoved all the rockets back there. But uh, I like. Uh, I'll tell you all a uh, story. Actually, I really didn't care for rockets when uh, when I was getting into modeling and science fiction. You know, like the you know starships. You know the way. Star Wars stuff, you know, Buck Rogers, for example. And then uh, after, basically, I you know, I got through a phase of that, and then I uh, started looking at rockets. And uh, I actually, uh, I love rockets now. I think they're uh, a staple in the uh, sci-fi world and also in the model world. So, uh, so much stuff you can do. I mean, I might be able to maybe make a, and I haven't looked at rocket stuff in a while, you know, might be able to take this, make a variant of another rocket, because they probably reused stuff in the old days uh, when they made movies, so who knows. But anyway, uh, I'd like to have another one of these, because uh, I'd like to have one uh, sealed, I think, but it's just one of those unsung little uh, uh, collector items, you know, just down the road that, you know, they made a model of that type scenario, but anyway, adding the rocket ship XM. Uh, to the art. Uh, and also, again, Pegasus was just cranking them out. Uh, this is the Moonlander. This is Von Braun's uh, little masterpiece, which I uh, kind of wish they would have used it so they could have sent it to Moon, but it's a it's a gorgeous kit. It's, a, it's one of these kits, if you start to build it, you cannot stop. That's uh, one of those, because there's just so many parts uh, but anyway, I think it look. Uh, I think it'd be a fantastic. I think also. I think this a will be a uh, nice little uh, uh, collector gem down the road, just because it's a uh, Von Braun, and uh, you know it's well accepted in the you know spaceship world and also in the model world. But anyway, I uh, I need to get and plus it's one three fifty a scale, so you can use that to go with you know. Uh, 1/350th uh, Star Trek, uh, you know ships. So that would that would work out just well with everything. But anyway, adding the uh, <coughs> Pegasus Moonlander uh, to the art. And uh, up next, and I've been wanting to do this for quite a uh, while. And uh, a friend of mine sent me a link uh, to get your. Uh, Face put on an action figure, so that intrigued me. Um, I wanted to make a model of myself, which I know it sounds kind of funny, but I didn't want to make a model of myself per se, but wanted to incorporate a little science fiction, a little, uh, you know, uh, just a general uh, figure in uh, in the design. So I came up with the uh, caretaker of the ark I thought it would be a unique thing and that's uh, uh, one thing I wanted to incorporate was you know most people know that I do own the uh, shadow models and uh, I thought that would be unique but anyway I came up with this and uh, I wanted to do the box art I'm not going to do I'm going to make a resin kit which is he's going to be about one tenth scale and uh, the figure itself is actually a uh, a uh, muscular blank, and uh, there's a guy in Florida that uh, he made a resin uh, uh, blank figures, and uh, I like them. The only the only thing I don't care for them is they're I want to say too muscular. I want it basically a basic form, and I I bought a male and female from him, and I re uh, I re uh, I toned down the uh, muscle tones on him. Uh, with clay and then I use paint as a filler. I think it uh, it smooths out the uh, once I get the clay uh, smoothed out I spray paint on it and I just basically uh, get it the uh, body smooth and everything else. There will be no keys for the uh, arms as in the arms will basically be like that <clears throat> and I wanted the generic form because uh, once I make a mold I'll, I'll keep a, a master and then I will uh, I'll reuse the uh, mold later on, you know, whenever I uh, have the urge to do, uh, you know, something else. But anyway, 
figure's about done. I basically did a, uh, uh, if you can see right here, uh, a tunic, all one piece, basically going to be all in black, because I do wear black almost all the time. And uh, I wanted, uh, I don't know, do I have one handy? Probably not. I kind of wanted to incorporate a little bit of, uh, uh, I want to say, you know, Dracula's or Nosferatu's little coat. But I also want to do like tunic for like uh, uh, Babylon 5, you know, the Alders kind of swapped over. So you got a little bit of science fiction uh, and all that. But um, the, uh, and I'll show the head in just a minute. The, uh, I want to do a little bit of uh, artwork for it. I thought, well, if I'm going to make a figure of the uh, caretaker of the art, aka me, I uh, thought I would. Uh, uh, do a little bit of a painting and this and I haven't painted in years and it was just a uh, fun one Sunday just to uh, just paint and have a blast and uh, I uh, printed out the, the caretaker of the art cut on I'm going to do probably a uh, I'm going to probably do an Aurora one but I'm going to put BHP in the middle just uh, I can't say where I want it uh, I'll probably put it somewhere maybe here and then I'm going to take a picture of it and uh, scale it down so I can put it in uh, you know boxes and all that and I still got to finish painting the uh, face which is just going to be a generic and ain't going to be me the, the head will be me but the uh, the box art won't uh, one thing about the painting itself is uh, I did it all in acrylics uh, which I like to I like to just uh, like Bob Ross you know how he likes to paint and paint the little happy tree and all that. That's my kind of style. I like the way uh, the way they just keep going, you know, and uh, fill in shade and everything. But I wanted the color palette. Uh, I probably don't have one. It's probably buried. Well, yeah, that right there is uh, James Bama. He did the uh, castle, uh, the the forgotten prisoner. Uh, he did the artwork for that, did uh, Dracula and all that, but he always does like uh, a lot of purples and uh, uh, just an excellent color palette, if you will. And uh, the uh, glow kits on Aurora, they actually went back over uh, James Bama's original paintings and painted them red to make the uh, glow kits, if you uh, have seen those. And... Uh, I like that rule. I tried to incorporate a little bit of that, and uh, I was going to do one with like a bunch of uh, model kits, but I uh, drew it out, and I really didn't care for it. And I wanted, uh, I really wanted the uh, just that to pop up once you uh, you know see the box. But anyway, it's going to be one tenth scale, which is about seven inches tall, and uh, it's basically a place called put your face on an action figure. And this is basically uh, this is my face. It's 3D printed, is what I guess it is. Uh, you can either get all kinds of hairstyles. It's basically like for Mego, but uh, I do have long hair, and that's the closest you're going to get, unless you get like uh, uh, you know, like the one with a ponytail on it. But I wanted uh, hair. That's pretty much uh, pretty close. Maybe a little bit longer. But there you have it. You can see me in uh, action figure form. And it's actually uh, pretty darn slick. It takes about a week to get it. I do know uh, you have to take a lot of selfies and uh, bright selfies. I mean, you got to have it well lit. And uh, once they uh, get a picture, bam, it's already out the door and uh, shipped. So there is me going to be getting ready to be molded. But uh, I do uh, big pore plugs on the head here for the neck because you will have to cut it right through there to get it to fit because I wanted my uh, generic uh, body here to fit uh, to accommodate me and to accommodate uh, uh, anything else that I do create down the road but anyway he's almost done and uh, probably available hopefully in a week or two so we can have the caretaker of the ark uh, so that's what I am doing today I am uh, in the process of making a uh, the caretaker kit uh, for the ark and to be to be sold in the uh, near future and uh, of course probably take some shows too as well but anyway those will be uh, available very very soon and I'll show uh, what the kit looks like once we, I get done with it but anyway we're adding the uh, moon lander we're adding the rocket ship XM adding another Hanabo I don't know if I can pick them all up can I yes I can we're adding the F-104 and we'll be adding the caretaker of the Ark 
into the ark. So that's what I got going on today. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode.